This is a Ford Crown Victoria, and this is a giant turbocharger. And in today's video, I'll show you everything you need to turbocharge a Ford Crown Victoria. Now, turboing a car is a very complex subject, but I'll do my best to try and simplify it as much as I can. I spent literal weeks researching for this video. So without further ado, let's get going. Before we dive deep into materials and specifics, it's important to define exactly what our goals are. Do you want to go all out with a high powered build or do you want to build something that will keep itself together and still be manageable? I like my car, so personally, I'd rather keep it all in one piece. And odds are you do too. I've found a lot of people like to run low boost applications on these old 4.6s. So with that in mind, I'd like to have my target PSI be around 5 PSI. PSI stands for pounds per square inch. Don't worry where that other P went. It's probably somewhere inside your mom. You might hear me refer to PSI as pounds or pounds of boost. For clarity's sake, they're all synonymous. So now that we have defined the parameters of our build, we need to decide on our turbocharger. I have been sent this massive turbocharger by a company called Max Speeding Rods for use in today's video and for use for when we actually do turbo a Crown Victoria. They have sponsored today's video, but more on them later. This specific model is the Max Speeding Rods GT45 Street Performance Turbocharger, based on the T4 platform. It has a billet machine compressor wheel, a K419 steel alloy turbine wheel, comes with a one-year warranty and is advertised to be able to generate up to 2 bar or 29 PSI, which is well within our target boost limits. While you're here, you also want to pick up the oil lines that go along with this turbocharger. And so we have picked our turbo and we're ready to make some boost, but we can't just throw this in our back seat and expect to make a whole bunch of horsepower. We need some more parts to actually mount this turbo. First, we have our exhaust flange. This allows us to bolt the exhaust straight up to the turbo. Remember how I said that this turbo was a T4 platform? This is very important as it shows us exactly what size flange we actually need to buy. This specific model I got off of Summit Racing, but you could find these on multiple websites at different price points. Now that we have the correct flange, normally this would get bolted or welded onto the factory exhaust. However, I'm considering using the factory two inch exhaust. This exhaust flange is a three inch exit, which means that it won't work with our factory two inch exhaust. And for that, I have an adapter. This side will be welded onto the factory two inch exhaust and while I don't need this end because the flange already has the other side of the equation. You could change the size of the exhaust on your car, but that would cost extra money and a lot more effort. So I'm just going to stick with the factory 2 inch exhaust. Okay, now that your flange is set up, you could bolt your turbo into place. And now it's time for our next part. This is an external wastegate from Summit Racing. And in my opinion, it is the most important part of your turbo setup as it regulates exactly how much PSI is gonna to go to your engine. Having a wastegate is important because without it, all of the exhaust gases would go into the turbine, making the turbo build as much boost as possible and doing its best impression of my ideal girlfriend. The wastegate has a spring with a set PSI limit, which pushes the bypass valve shut and directs all of the exhaust gases into the turbine, which generates boost. The wastegate also references the PSI the turbo generates via a hose coming from the charge pipe. On one side of the wastegate, the spring is keeping the gate shut, but on the other side, the pressure from the turbo is trying to open it. Eventually, the spring can only hold back so much pressure before finally giving in, opening the gate and letting the exhaust gases bypass the turbine. This specific model from Summit Racing comes with many different springs that you can mix and match to get the most boost out of your turbo. But because I only want to run 5 PSI, I'll be putting in the 5.5 PSI spring. There's no doubt that the wastegate is extremely important, but by itself, it could be a little bit inefficient. The pressure from the turbo will start to push up against the spring even before it maxes out on the 5.5 PSI limit. This is a manual boost controller, and this is the next step to help us control the PSI that the turbo generates. This boost controller has an adjustment on it you could adjust it to be stronger or weaker. What it does is hold the PSI from the compressed side and holds it until it matches the exact amount of PSI that you set on the boost controller before it sends the PSI out to the wastegate. This will help your turbo spool up a lot faster. There are many different types of boost controllers. Two ways, which is what this is. Three ways, four ways, two ways electronic. But in our case, this two-way manual is going to suit us the best 
because I don't really feel like dropping thousands of dollars on a standalone ECU. You know how there's nothing worse than not knowing what's going on? Kind of like that ex-girlfriend that you had that suddenly stopped talking with you before she suddenly broke up with you. Well, a turbo is the same way. It's better to have more information than not enough. This right here is a boost gauge. It's very important for us to know exactly how much boost the turbo is generating and sending into the engine. This specific model reads up to 15 PSI, which for our application is good because we're only gonna be running around five PSI. No use to having a PSI gauge that reads up to 30 when we're only gonna have five. It also has multiple different colors and a memory option so that the color that you choose saves every time you restart your car. The way that this is plumbed is by taking the one NPT fitting on the back of it and plugging it somewhere into the charge pipe side of the car. You can mount these wherever you like, as long as it's in plain view. But for me, I like to keep things somewhat clean. This right here is an insert from ADTR that goes directly onto your steering column for the 92 through 2004 model years. There are two different models, one for a column shifter like this, and there's also a different model for floor shifters that don't have the cutout. The boost gauge just slides right in here and you can enjoy a full view of your boost gauge. And we have finally arrived at the charge pipe side. And we have two great pieces of technology to go along with it. First off, let's start with the intercooler. The purpose of an intercooler is to take the air generated from your turbo while it's going through and cool it down. According to the ideal gas law, the colder a gas is, the more dense it is. Meaning that the more dense the air is, the more fuel we could burn, making us more horsepower. The ideal placement of an intercooler is somewhere where it's gonna have a lot of air go through it. For us, it'll probably be somewhere in the front of the grill. This model from Max Speeding Rods is the intercooler I have chosen. It has plenty of surface area to cool down the air, as well as it has one, two, three, four different areas for us to plumb in different accessories, like our boost gates and some other, woo, and some other accessories that we'll be using. This model is a two and a half inch model diameter going through it, which I chose because it is the closest size to the outlet of the compressor side of the turbo. Now we could get onto our next piece. This right here is a blow off valve. This device gives you the blow that your ex never could. When you are slamming the throttle in your car, you're telling your turbo to build up as much boost as possible. But as soon as you let go of the gas, you close your throttle body completely shut. What happens is that you build up a lot of pressure inside of the charge pipe side in front of the throttle plate. What happens when you have a lot of boost build up there is it'll want to find its way out. And typically that is out from the turbo itself. This is where you get that famous stutatu sound that so many people enjoy. But even though it pleases your monkey brain to hear that sound, it's actually not healthy for your turbo because you're sending air back out the way where it should not be going. And that's where this device comes in. Basically, you have a reading from behind the throttle plate and you have pressure from the compressor side. When your car is at wide open throttle, you have full pressure behind the throttle plate, pushing PSI into the wastegate and forcing it down while you also have the exact same amount of PSI pushing up against it. But when you let off the gas and shut your throttle plate, you no longer have boost on this side, meaning that you only have boost on this side, forcing this open and letting all of the boost out. This model is also from Max Speeding Rods. I bought it because it came with a flange that matches the diameter of our charge pipe, two and a half inches. This means that I won't have to buy my own flange to be able to put it onto our charge pipe. Another thing that I like to talk about is the placement of your mass airflow sensor. I spoke with prominent Panther car tuner, Marty Oaks, and he said that your mass airflow sensor should ideally be placed within one foot of your throttle plate. This makes sure that you have the ideal reading of pressure and temperature going into your engine, making it a lot easier to tune your car. And now a word from our sponsor, Max Speeding Rods. Max Speeding Rods is a company that's been around since 2006 mainly selling budget-friendly coilovers, battery replacement parts, and DIY aftermarket parts. They've been kind enough to send over this giant turbo for our build. However, the rest of the parts have been bought with my own money. So if you'd like to get your hand on some of these products and help support the channel, there'll be a link in the description where you can enjoy 10% off your final price. Thank you, Max Beating Rods. Now let's get back to the video. 
Another thing that you'll need to do is create an oil setup. With this turbo, it is an oiled setup, meaning that you have a pressure line coming in one side and you have a return line going out the other side. Without oil, your turbocharger, without a doubt, will freeze up very fast. And, well, that's not good. There are two different types of oil setups. An oil setup that is based off of the engine oil pumping through your car, which in my case, if I were to use that, I'd probably use an oil filter relocation kit and put the turbo somewhere in between the engine oil and the filter. The second option is to create an independent oil loop. And in my opinion, because I'm going to be rear mounting this turbo, I think it'll be the best option for me because I won't need to plumb lines all the way from the back of the car all the way to the front. I will need to have my own reservoir and a sump pump and so on and so forth. And down she goes. But all in all, it'll turn out better for me. Up until this point, we've been talking about one side of the equation, building boost. But you don't make power with just boost alone. You need the other part of the equation, which is fuel. Now, speaking with Marty, we believe that the factory fuel pump pressure regulator and so forth should all work plenty fine with making only 5 psi. The only thing that he suggests doing in my case is to upgrade the size of our injectors. What I have here is a set of used, keep in mind, 2003 to 2004 Ford Cobra injectors rated for 39 pounds. I found these on eBay for $150 and they'll really help us get more fuel into the engine. Okay. Now we have all of our parts, and let's say they're all put together and you're ready to fire up your car. But when you fire up the car, it is not running right. And that's because your car is not tuned properly. That's where this comes in. This is a Marty tune that you buy from Moe's Speed Shop. Remember the name Marty Oaks? Well, this is where he comes in. When you buy this tune, talk with Marty and let him know exactly what you're doing. As long as you have a Windows 10 laptop and a moving hotspot, which I'd suggest using your phone as a hotspot, he could tune your car remotely. Just make sure that your laptop is updated or he will smite you from this land. Earlier, I mentioned fuel injectors. I'm going with the 39 pound factory Ford, which Marty already has the specs for. If you end up going with a set of aftermarket injectors, make sure that you buy a set that comes with a spec sheet explaining all the specifications of the injectors. Do not set up an appointment with Marty unless you know all of the specifications of the injectors or else it'll be a big waste of time and there you have it ladies and gentlemen that is everything you need to turbo a ford crown victoria i'm sure i missed a couple of things here and there but if you have any questions make sure to ask them in the comments below or call me stupid that tends to happen often if you like the ford crown victoria and you want to watch more videos take a peek at one of these two videos up here but with that being all thank you guys so much for watching like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. It's probably somewhere inside your mom. Oh!